Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Akansha Parimu. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you. Two JEM terrorists neutralized in encounter in India's Jammu and Kashmir. Suicide attack at Education Institute in Afghan capital kills 19. And over 9,000 cases of dengue reported in Bangladesh in September. And now for all the details. Two jaish e mohammed terrorists planning to target an army recruitment rally were neutralized in an encounter in Baramulla in India's Jammu and Kashmir on Friday. This came two days after security forces gunned down three terrorists of the Pakistan-based terror outfit in a similar encounter in Kulgam district. Two terrorists linked with Pakistan-based jaish e mohammed JEM terror outfit were neutralized in an encounter with security forces in Baramulla district in India's northern Jammu and Kashmir territory on Friday, a senior police official said. The operation was carried out by a joint team of police, army and paramilitary CRPF based on specific inputs. Police said the terrorists were planning to attack a recruitment rally as part of the new military hiring scheme Agni Veer being held in the district. Uh, joint parties pe fire uh, khol diya. Uh, iske chalke encounter shuru ho gaya. Aur uh, jo encounter hai uh, kafi der chala. Aur uh, ultimately ye fir morning hours mein jo hai wo khatam hua. This came two days after three JEM terrorists were gunned down in a similar encounter in Kulgam district. Meanwhile, search operations were also underway in Shopian district, where a brief gunfight took place with terrorists. But they were believed to have escaped. India has long accused Pakistan aids terrorists to spread unrest in Kashmir Valley. Islamabad, however, denies the charge. Lieutenant General retired Anil Chauhan assumed charge as India's second chief of defence staff on Friday. He will also function as secretary to the Department of the Military Affairs. The appointment comes as the situation at the country's borders with neighbours China and Pakistan remains tense. Retired Lieutenant General Anil Chauhan paid tributes at the National War Memorial and received a Guard of Honour in New Delhi as he assumed the role of India's second Chief of Defence Staff on Friday after being appointed this week. 61-year-old Chauhan commanded the Indian Army's Eastern Division before retiring in May 2021. He succeeds Bipin Rawat, who died in a helicopter crash, along with 13 others last December. Bipin Rawat was appointed as India's first CDS by Prime Minister Narendra Modi's government in late 2019. Chauhan will also function as secretary to the Department of Military Affairs. He said he will try to fulfill expectations of three services. We will tackle all challenges and difficulties together, he said. Chief of Defence Staff के पद की जो आशाएं और उपेक्षाएं भारत के तीनों सेनाओं को या सरकार की या हमारे देशवासियों की है मैं उन्हें पूरा करने की भरपूर कोशिश करूंगा The appointment comes after months of speculation over who would be India's defense chief while the situation at the country's borders with neighbors China and Pakistan remains tense in news from Pakistan, scores of labourers in Pakistan's southern Sindh province were seen repairing railway tracks which were damaged by devastating floods in the country, eyeing a possible restart of the train services in the first week of October. Thousands of rail workers have also been struggling for income for more than a month now. Hundreds of labourers were seen working to repair railway tracks on Wednesday, damaged by recent floods in Pakistan's southern Sindh province, eyeing a possible restart of a train service next week. 
thousands of rail workers have also been struggling for income for more than a month after a historic and intense monsoon dumped about three times as much as rain as Pakistan's three-decade average. Local broadcasters reported that the Federal Minister for Railways told a cabinet meeting on Wednesday that he had given orders for normal operations to be restored as soon as possible, but they had to wait for water to drain first. UN agencies had begun work to assess the South Asian nation's reconstruction needs after it received 391 mm of rain or nearly 190% more than the 30-year average in July and August. The deluge which scientists say was excavated by climate change has killed nearly 1,600 and affected about 33 million people in the country of 220 million. It has swept away homes, crops, bridges, roads and livestock ill damages estimated at 30 billion US dollars. Moving on, locals in Pakistan administered Kashmir have raised concern over indiscriminate felling of trees as it is leading to environmental degradation and unusually warm temperatures in the illegally occupied region. They have blamed that the Pakistan government has done nothing to mitigate the effects of natural calamities and they are left to brace the hazardous consequences. Locals in Pakistan administered Kashmir have raised concern over climate change and deforestation as it is leading to environmental degradation and unusual warm temperatures in the illegally occupied region. Roshan Mughal, a local journalist, said that glacial melt in the region due to unprecedented heat wave this year resulted in devastating floods. He added trees along the rivers which worked as a flood defence have disappeared in the past few years and hardly any new trees have come up in their place. He urged the Pakistani government to stop deforestation. <laughs> Locals in Pakistan administered Kashmir have blamed that Pakistan has paid little attention to their pressing problems over the years while it exploits natural resources in the region. They say that authorities have done nothing to mitigate the effects of natural calamities and they are left to brace the hazardous consequences. In news from Afghanistan, a suicide attack at a tutoring center in Afghan capital Kabul killed at least 19 people and wounded dozens, police said on Friday, but there was no immediate claim of responsibility for the blast. The official death toll was likely to rise. At least 19 people were killed and dozens were wounded in a suicide attack at a private tutoring center in Afghanistan's capital Kabul on Friday with no immediate claim of responsibility for the blast. Families rushed to hospitals where ambulances were arriving with victims. A Kabul police spokesperson said the official toll was 19 people dead and 27 wounded. But the death toll was likely to rise. Many of those living in the western area where the blast occurred are Hazara, an ethnic Shiite Muslim minority targeted in past attacks launched by ultra-radical Islamic State and others. Uh, 
کسی گریان میکند کسی در روی خود شرح خورده بود که شبه آنها میرفت کسی ها کار ما کمک شدند حالا ما رفت تبدیل کنیم از داخل دو جنازه را منتقال دادیم چی را هم The United Nations and its agencies condemned the attack and said violence in and around education establishments is never acceptable. Since taking over Afghanistan in August 2021, the Taliban has emphasized that it has improved security, but in recent months there have been a series of blasts at mosques and civilian areas. Over 9,000 fresh cases of dengue fever have been reported in Bangladesh in September alone, while the death toll has climbed past 50 this year. Dengue is common in South Asia, especially during the monsoon season. Most patients survive the disease with access to proper medical care, but it is estimated to kill about 20,000 globally every year. Over 9,000 fresh cases of dengue fever were reported in Bangladesh so far this month, reports have suggested. The Directorate General of Health Services, DGHS, said a total of 506 people were hospitalized till Thursday in the past 24 hours, suffering from the mosquito-borne disease. The South Asian nation has been reporting over 500 cases of dengue for the past three consecutive days. According to DGHS, month-wise, one person died in June, nine in July, 11 in August, and 34 in September. With the fresh infections, the number of confirmed dengue cases in Bangladesh has reached 15,852 this year, and it has claimed over 50 lives so far. Dengue fever spread by the bite of Aedes aegypti mosquito usually causes intense pain in muscles and joints. It is common in South Asia, especially during the monsoon season, and there is no specific treatment. Most patients survive the disease with early detection and access to proper medical care, but it is estimated to kill about 20,000 globally every year. An all-women cast of traditional play Ramlila, depicting the life of Hindu Lord Ram, is grabbing eyeballs in India's Zirakpur town. One of the performers said they thought it will just be their families who would watch them act, but it has been houseful since day one. Women in Zirakpur in India's northern Punjab state are performing Ram Leela, a reenactment of Hindu Lord Ram's life, marking the first depiction of the mythological epic by an all-women cast. Every year, Ram Leela is staged during the nine-day Hindu festival of Navratri across the country. Legend has it that Ram's consort Sita was abducted by demon king Ravan. Ram went in war with Ravan to release his wife from captivity. The traditional play depicting this story concludes on the 10th day, coinciding with the Dashera festival with the killing of Ravan, signifying the victory of good over evil. One of the performers said they thought it will just be their families, but it has been houseful since day one. बैठे बैठे उनके दिमाग में आया कि औरतों के लिए कुछ करते हैं। बस उन्होंने ये सारा प्रस्ताव सभी औरतों के सामने रखा, सभी तैयार हो गए। बिल्कुल। फर्स्ट डे तो हमें उम्मीद नहीं थी, हमें लगा कि जो हमारे घर के लोग हैं वो आ जाएं शायद। जब हम बाहर जब देखे हमने खचा खच सारी चेयर्स भरी हुई, आधी जनता खड़ी हुई है, तो मतलब लगा कि हाँ, कुछ हम कर सकते हैं वाकई में। हाँ, मुझे बहुत अच्छा लग रहा है, because हम लोग हिस्ट्री बनाने जा रहे हैं, क्योंकि हर बार रामलीला हमेशा मेन करते हैं, इस बार विमेन ने कुछ आगे चांस लिया है, तो बहुत अच्छा लग रहा है। Owing to the pandemic, Ramlila was either cancelled or went online in most parts of the country and was resumed in 2021 when COVID protocols were relaxed. This year, the Shera will be celebrated on 5th of October. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianNewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianNewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.